Hello everyone, my name is Kaylee. I am a third year medical student at Ross University. I feel like I can say that with full confidence now that I'm a third year re oh, third year, re uh, third year medical student now that I have taken step one. So I tend to get a lot of questions about Ross in general, so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and answer those now today. So the first question or statement, one of my major concerns is the money to pay for school. Do you have to pay the full amount of the advertised fee? Do you get financial aid or scholarships? So it is basically the same thing as any other American school in that you do apply through FAFSA, you get the loans through FAFSA, you get everything. Like I, all my student loans are through the government right now. I got a scholarship if you look at rossrusm.com or whatever, ross.com, um, it's not ross.com, but if you look at that, there are a good amount of scholarships there. I actually kind of just asked, I was, I said they didn't give me any scholarships and I was kind of like, I think I deserve some, and then they did end up giving me a scholarship. It was basically, it paid for my first semester which I kind of thought of like a get out of free card, like if I did not do too well, then I could just, eh. but so far so good, I'm, you know, halfway through, I'm having a good time, but uh, that's a weird way to say it. But yeah, basically you apply through financial aid, you're probably going to end up, I think, with $400,000 in debt. Um, whenever I did compare, it did seem like it was about the same cost as any public school here in the US. It did not seem, I don't remember it being more than a private school or anything like that here in the US. It's, it's really the same thing from what I have been told and from what I do see online. You do have to pay the full amount, I'm not too sure what that question meant necessarily, but yes, you do have to pay the, I think it's 26,000 in tuition and then all the random fees. So I think you end up taking about 40000 out a semester to pay for your, you to be alive. Next question, which is a big question. Are you concerned about getting into a residency of your choice? So I think every medical student is. <laughs> I think, yeah, I mean, that's not even a thing. That's a, you, we all know that, that it's, it's hard even for U.S. medical students, even though I think that the match rate is like 80%. 88% for US um, MDs and then being a US IMG it goes down a bit but whenever I do honestly I think that it's good for you to just plug in the numbers yourself I'll go ahead and try to find something and throw it up here I think if you just look at the numbers it, it speaks for itself but I really don't think that I would be less worried if I was a US medical student just taking it in the US rather than this route, which is the Caribbean route, the US IMG, yeah, I really don't think I would be any less stressed out. I think it's just the normal amount of stress out. I mean, from what I've seen, if you do decent for step one, you get letters of rec, and you're just nice to people, like, because it does seem like that is a big part of it, the letters of rec, and how well you play with others, basically, um, because it is very communication-based, so it's hard to want someone if you hate every moment with them. So I think that, yeah, I really don't think that I'm worried about getting into residency any less or any more than if I were to be a US. It's just you worry about it because you never know. But I think she was also asking too about how um, are we going to get into the special seat that we want. Same thing I feel like for the for the US. Um, you never know what you're really going to get going to get into but that is something that people say is that if you go into the Caribbean route you're only going to get into family medicine so I don't really agree with that um, there's plenty of people I if you look at again this is something that you can look at and I'll try to find it as well and kind of show you a screenshot of what Ross does end up having for specialties um, and then you can always compare it to the US um, what they tend to go into I think it's just family medicine has more I am has more, internal medicine has more, and a lot of people do those things as a stepping stool, as a stepping stool anyways, like if you wanted to do cardiology, you do internal medicine and then cardiology, so it might look like 
uh, it might look like Ross people only go into those specialties because they can't get into anything else but a lot of times it's because that's the stepping stone into the next thing like if you wanted to do sports medicine you go from sports medicine to or sorry you go from family medicine to sports medicine if you wanted to go into cardiology you do internal medicine and cardiology if you want to do, go into gastroenterology same thing or rheumatology or there's so many so that's even though it may look like you're not getting or that raw students aren't getting to their specialty and they're only going into internal medicine that's not necessarily true there are people that might go into the specialty that they don't want but there's always opportunity to uh, reapply even if you're in your residency or it's the same thing for US students as well I, I'll, I'll keep saying that but I do know that it is it tends to be a lot worse for anyone to take a year off rather than let's say if you said oh no I definitely 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 only want to do neurology if I don't get into neurology I just I don't want to apply anywhere else then if you don't get accepted, then it kind of takes a lot longer and your application doesn't look quite as great than if you had gone into internal medicine and then maybe started applying later on. But Next question, do you think that the students graduating from Ross are successful in their residency? I really do believe that. <laughs> um, I think that if you work that hard to get there, you did something right and you're going to keep doing that thing right if you look at that that's what i go by i don't really like going by what people say on reddit what people love to post on facebook or whatever random thing but i tend to just look at the facts and i look at i'll go to whatever place i would like to get a residency or anything like that and i'll just look at okay who's the staff oh wow there's a lot of ross people here what are they and a lot of times they'll be the chief resident they'll be the like I think at, at Cleveland Clinic right now who we who I was just I was just there today we did a hospital tour um, but the the hospitalists or the chief intern it was like the people running the show tend to be Ross students or Ross alum so they tend to do really well <laughs> once they're there I mean if you think about it Ross students have worked really hard especially right now because of COVID we all left where we were, like we were all on an island. We left at the last second, we pushed off to exams. We, you know, there's at certain times there are riots going on, which rightfully so, they should be going on. You know, the world's a little crazy, so we should do something about that. But just the world doesn't stop for you. So Ross students, they've been through a lot before that. They were on a boat. Before that, they were in the middle of a hurricane with no water for weeks. So, <laughs> if you make it to residency, you're going to be good. Are students from Ross viewed less favorably in the States? So, interestingly enough, um, kind of going back to the specialty thing, um, for some reason, Ross students tend to get accepted with a lower step. I'm talking about stuff because that's just a numerical value that we can tie to it tie to it, um, but they tend to uh, score 10 points lower for family medicine and internal medicine and get accepted. So I think that Ross students are looked favor at favorably for those specialties, however maybe a little bit less favorably for like neurosurgery. But those are already pretty cutthroat, so I mean it, I guess it makes sense that if so many people are applying, it's kind of just like maybe if you remember for um, whenever you're trying to get accepted into medical school, there's a certain cutoff. This the it's the residency program that says, hey, nope, not accepting anybody, not accepting any Ross kids, or I'm not accepting any IMGs, just not going to do it. Then they just won't look at you. And same with step. So if you don't make over this 230, we're not looking at you. But I mean, again, I'll pull up the whatever specialty to show that Ross, still, Ross students still get in. Um, whether they're viewed favorably, again, I think is mostly based on the director. Um, but if you think about it, I mean, we have graduated each, each year, each match year, almost 600 people are matched. So that's 600 doctors getting led into the world, 600 though, 600 people that are later going to be making decisions like 
attendings or program directors that can hire you. So I really feel like we aren't necessarily looked down upon at all. But favorably, I feel like in certain circumstances we are looked upon favorably, in certain circumstances probably not. Do you find that Ross is giving you any competitive advantage? That's interesting. I don't really think about that. Um, maybe. I guess in, like in comparison to Saba or AUG or AUC or St. George, maybe you're competing? Not really. Um, but competitive advantage. That's a fun word to say. Um, I mean, competitive advantage, I guess, would be the, the same thing that I kind of just said in that a lot of the doctors, you know, the almost 600 doctors a year going to the going into the workforce or whatever you would call it, um, that is an advantage in that they will probably want another alum. They know that what they went through, they know that you're going to be hardworking and all that. Some questions for people from people in Ross uh, have to do a lot with um, the like clinicals. Um, clinicals, I love. They're fun. They are a little bit crazy right now with COVID. <laughs> Like when you have to describe a physical exam, I feel like that's even harder than doing a physical exam because I know that I didn't study it all that much, so to have to describe it over a Zoom call can be a little daunting, it could be scary, but it's a lot of fun. Living in Barbados, I get that question a lot. Um, it's expensive, people will ask that, yeah, it's, I feel like it's definitely more expensive than living in the States. But I feel like it's, it tends to be more expensive in terms of if you try to buy things from the U.S. So if you're trying to buy local stuff, it tends to be cheaper. Where I lived, which was Gooseberry, was Ross Housing. It really, it wasn't that bad. Wasn't that bad, LOL. Honestly, it was really nice, in my opinion, to be on an island. Like, it, it really was a great place to study because I was on an island surrounded by people doing the same exact thing. So if I was feeling sorry for myself, if I just needed someone to commiserate with, if I needed, if we had, everyone had an exam that day, we knew that we were all at the beach having a good time. So I definitely don't regret going to an island and having that experience because it was really nice. Not a lot of distractions. I didn't have a car. I was mostly just studying all day, hanging out inside. And it was a it was a great community, so